Hey guys, Miss Miklos here with our new exciting lecture that goes along with section 3.1 out of the book. And we're talking about solving linear systems by graphing. This note handout is available on Myolu Studio if you need that. Um, I'm just crossing off this assignment because I don't even know if that matches or not, but whatever. It's on your calendar and everything. So um, kind of a recap, or not a recap, I should say a preview of this chapter um, is that we are going to learn how to solve all sorts of linear systems. The first method we are learning is graphing. There are some positives about graphing and definitely some negatives. Graphing is hands down my least favorite way. Um, what is helpful though is that it shows a very visual example. It's really easy for us to see exactly what we're trying to find. We can get the idea of two lines actually intersecting at a point. We can see two lines being parallel, or we can see two lines being the same line. Um, so for those of you that are visual learners, graphing does give us a great um, just picture of what we're looking at. Okay, some disadvantages. I don't know about you guys, but I don't always draw the world's straightest lines. And even if we have a straight edge, sometimes we're going to be inaccurate. Okay, so it is really important that when we, are gra when we are graphing to find a solution like this, we need to be very, very specific with where our lines are going. The other thing that is tough is it's impossible to use when we have fractions. Boo, we hate fractions. But the reason being is because if they do if our two lines do not intersect on what we call like a lattice point, um, those would be at integers, it's really difficult for me to guess exactly where they crossed at. So that's why we don't do graphing all the time, but that's all we're doing today, so get ready. Um, our steps. We're going to write each equation in either slope, intercept, or standard form, just like last chapter. We're going to graph each line, writing out M and B. And then we're going to find the point where the two lines intersect. Okay, and there's really three different situations that we may see. The first one being that the lines actually intersect at a point. The second one is that if they end up being the same line, Back in Algebra 1, you probably said the system has infinitely many solutions, or IMS. We are going to be more specific this year. We are going to write the order, all ordered pairs x, y, that's what this means, and then we're going to actually write the equation of the line. We're not going to write the words equation of the line, but whatever the actual equation is. And since we have two equations and they are the same thing, it wouldn't matter which one we write. Okay, so this is being more specific than just saying, yeah, we have a ton of different solutions. This is telling us specifically where all the solutions are. Our final type is if the graphs are parallel lines. Oops, didn't mean to move that there. If the graphs are parallel lines, we know that the system has no solution, and we will see that because there will not be a point of intersection. Yes, what we're doing today is that simple, that straightforward, so let's get going. So we're going to start here with example number one. Yay, these are both in standard form. Just a reminder, standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. Um, if you hate standard form, we learned last chapter, we can always use slope-intercept form to graph as well. The important thing, though, is that we need to figure out what is the slope, what is the y-intercept. So... In standard form, we learn that the slope is the opposite of A over B. So in this case, my first line, X plus 3Y equals 5, my slope is negative 1 third, and my Y-intercept is 5 thirds, because the way we find the Y-intercept is C over B. Okay, our next line here, I'm going to change to a different color. Let's go with... A pink. Okay. So my slope would be negative 2 over negative 1, so positive 2. And my y-intercept would be negative 3 because that would be 3 divided by negative 1. So I'm going to graph these one at a time. Okay. We know B represents an ordered pair. So that would be an ordered pair. 
I know that five thirds is like one and two thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna put a point at one and two thirds. A slope of negative one third tells me I need to go down one and over three from there. Okay, and I'm also gonna go up one and to the left three. And then I'm going to attempt to connect those points. Okay, now with my other one, our y-intercept is negative 3, so that's like an ordered pair of 0, negative 3. I know I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. So now I'm going to connect those. Okay, and we can already kind of see why graphing is not always the best method to do any of this stuff by. But it looks to me like they intersect here at 2, 1. Now, the best thing about what we are doing today... Okay, I'm thinking 2, 1 is my solution, but I actually can figure it out for sure because we know that a graph represents every single solution to a function. So, if there's only one place where these graphs intersect, that means this ordered pair should work in both of these equations. So let's test it out. Okay, 2 plus 3 times 1 equals 5. Check, that works. Then 2 times 2 minus 1 equals 3. Check, that works as well. So that tells me, even though my graph here was slightly off, I could figure out it is 2, 1, and it would be really important for me to check and make sure that it makes a true statement in both of these equations. Moving on to number 2, once again we have standard form. So my slope is the opposite of 2 over negative 1 or 2. My y-intercept is 3 over negative 1 or negative 3. My other line, my slope is the opposite of 6 over negative 3, which becomes 2. And my y-intercept is 9 divided by negative 3, which is negative 3. Now looking at these, we can deduce that these are actually the same exact line. Okay, if you guys figure this out, you do not need to graph it, but I just want to show us what our graph would look like. Okay, so there is my first equation. My second equation, we can see, is the same exact line. And so that's telling me all of these points are actually solutions. So my answer is going to be x, y, so all the ordered pairs, and then I can write either of those two equations. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to say all the ordered pairs on the line, 2x minus y equals 3. Now, just kind of a side note, if we look at these two lines, do you guys notice anything about them? And what kind of stands out to me is that this second line is a multiple of the first line. In fact, if I multiply this first equation by 3, it gives me the second equation. If that is something that we notice right away, I don't even have to do this. I can go ahead and just write my answer right away. Okay, number three. Number three looks kind of awful to me, um, but let's go through it anyways. My slope. It might help if my pen is on. There we go. My slope, once again, is the opposite of A over B, so I would get positive three. My y-intercept is negative 8 because that's 8 over negative 1. That looks bad to me because that's off my graph. Okay, my next line, yes, I could definitely use fractions, but if you hate fractions, it might be helpful to multiply by 6. Why 6? Because that's going to eliminate my fractions, so I would get 2x minus y equals 6. This might be much easier for you to find the slope in the y-intercept. So I know the slope is the opposite of a over b, so the opposite of 2 over negative 1 would be positive 2. My y-intercept would be negative 6. Now, the struggle on this one with my graph, as I said, is I am not going to be able to graph everything on here. So I'm going to have to kind of use my logic here. I know that eight, negative 8 is like an ordered pair of 0, negative 8. So I would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so it's somewhere down here. 
I know then if a slope is 3, that means I have to go up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1. So even though we went off the graph, I'm not even going to pay attention to that y-intercept. Well, we can. Mine's just not super up to scale. But we can use that ordered pair to keep going. Okay, same idea with my next one. Okay, negative 6 would be somewhere down here, and I need to go up 2 and over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And it looks like we have a solution here. In fact, to me, that looks like those intersect at 2, negative 2. So I know the way I double check this is by substituting in. So 3 times 2 minus 2, I'm sorry, minus negative 2 equals 8. That works. Okay, this one's going to be fun. 1 third times 2 minus 1 6 times negative 2 equals 1. Is 2 thirds plus 2 over 6 is 1 third equal to 1? It is. So that confirms that 2, negative 2 is our solution. Final example, I know you're excited. Okay, my slope on this first equation would be the opposite of 2 over negative 1 or 2, and my y-intercept is negative 3. Our second line has a slope that would be the opposite of 6 over negative 3, which is 2. My y-intercept would be negative 2 thirds. So some of you might be noticing something about this, but I'm going to keep going just to see what this looks like. My first line, I'm going to 0, negative 3, and then I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. I'm going to go ahead and connect these with a line. Our next line has a y-intercept of negative 2 thirds, and then I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and I'm going to connect those with a straight line. And we have a problem here. Where the heck do they intersect? Okay, in fact, it looks like they don't intersect at all because they are indeed parallel lines. And if we look back at our original problem, our slopes are the same, our y-intercepts are different. That means that they are parallel. We know parallel lines never intersect, so that means that they do not have any points in common. So we are going to say no solution. So hopefully this gives you a really brief overview of what to expect on this particular section. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, um, I'm actually going to show you guys how to check for points of intersection using your graphing calculator. We've already talked about algebraically, and honestly, often that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, graphically though, we can use our graphing calculator to do this, and this method could be used as a check if we want to, even when we're using other methods to solve the system. I just want to stress this is a way to check it. Um, I know often I tell you guys, oh, I don't care how we solve something. In this chapter, I do, because I just want to make us aware of all the different methods we can use. I don't care how you double check your answer, though, so feel free to use either of these two methods. Okay, so I'm going to transition over to my graphing calculator and go ahead and use these instructions to help you out as we follow along. Hey guys, here is my lovely graphing calculator, and I'm going to start by pressing Y equals. And if we're following along with the handout that is on our notes, it tells us the first function is 4X minus 2. And then we have a second function, so I'm going to use the down arrow and go to Y sub 2 and type in negative 3X plus 1. So I have two different functions graphed here, and I'm going to press zoom 6, and it's going to give me a picture of what this looks like. And from this, I can definitely see that they do intersect somewhere over here. Okay, I would like to point out, um, before we go any further, 
that in order, oh here, let me show us our key history too. That might help. Um, in order for us to graph in our graphing calculator, our equations need to be in slope-intercept form. So if the original problems were in standard form, we would need to isolate y in order to graph them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press second trace. And it gives me this menu. We've looked at this menu previously, but this time what I want to look at is number five, which is intersect, because I care about where do these intersect with one another. So I'm going to choose option five. I can either press five or I can use the up and down arrows. So it's asking me, is this the first curve? And it's blinking, and it actually gives me an equation up here. So yes, that is my first curve, so I'm going to press enter. Now it's going to ask me, is this the second curve? Once again, it has y sub 2 up top. Notice that our calculator is pretty smart. It automatically jumped to the other equation. So I'm going to press enter again. The only time this can get tricky is if we had more than one line, which we don't have in this class. Now it's telling me to guess, so I'm going to use my arrows, my right and left arrows, and move close to where I think the point of intersection is and press enter again. And it tells us that the intersection is at 0.428, or I should say 0.429, because I'm rounding, comma, negative 0.28. So this is a quick way to double check our answers. Okay, just to kind of recap what we did, we pressed second trace and chose intersect. First curve, I'm pressing enter. It jumps to second curve, I am pressing enter. And then I'm moving close to where I think my point of intersection is and pressing enter for my guess. Okay, we don't have to use this. That's okay if we don't. However, it could be something helpful for you.